Welcome to this presentation about low unit cost geothermal development. I will start by giving you a quick introduction into geothermal energy and then I will focus on the Netherlands heat market and I will talk about the conventional doublet that we use to harvest this heat in the Netherlands. Thereafter I will talk about low unit cost systems as an alternative to the conventional doublet. I will show you some examples of interpretations that we have done in Enschede and Erika, that's eastern part of the Netherlands. And then I will make a comparison between LUCs and conventional doublets before wrapping it up. So let's start by giving a quick introduction about geothermal energy. So we're talking about open systems here and that is a way to harvest the natural heat of the earth in which we require a porous permeable layer, a reservoir or aquifer at a certain depth. The deeper we go, the higher the temperature and we drill into this uh, reservoir, we pump up the hot water in a well that is called a producer and then in a doublet we inject the cooled off water back into the same reservoir. Um, thereafter the water will slowly uh, heat up again and if all goes well you have a system that can be used for tens of years. 10, 20, 30 years uh, is quite normal. We uh, distinguish uh, three types of uh, options in this type of uh, open systems. There is the hydrothermal systems which are uh, above hot spots in the world. So that is typically areas where we have uh, uh, volcanic uh, activities and, and breaks like in Indonesia or in Kenya uh, but also in Italy or Iceland uh, is of course a well known example. And um, yeah, basically it's uh, it's much hotter than uh, but, uh, what we are uh, looking at in the Netherlands. Uh, in the Netherlands we have the situation on the right, low enthalpy environment and we, uh, we are drilling into hot sedimentary aquifers. There's also a third system in the middle, the petrothermal system in which we drill into basement. The basement is normally not... Uh, porous so we then have to uh, to create some pores uh, fractures by uh, stimulating the uh, the basement reservoir so that we get get a flow of uh, fluids going uh, between producer and injector now we will be talking about the hot sedimentary aquifers that's the situation we have here in the Netherlands and here we focus on reservoirs of 2 to 3 kilometer depths temperatures of 70 to 100 degrees and in 2021 we had uh, 26 uh, producing systems in the Netherlands and these were used almost all of them for heating greenhouses 23 out of 26 one of these systems was used for district heating and two of them were used for a combination of heating greenhouses as well as uh, district heating now to generate uh, electricity we need to go much deeper, we need temperatures of above uh, 180 degrees and that is presently not commercially viable in the Netherlands. There are research projects uh, stimulated by the uh, Dutch government uh, which are investigating ultra deep ge geothermal drilling into 4 kilometers or more depths to reach these type of uh, situations where we can actually produce electricity but we will be focusing on heat uh, delivery. Now, One big issue in geothermal uh, development is earthquakes especially here in the Netherlands we are pretty uh, scared about earthquakes uh, because of the Groningen gas field uh, earthquakes that have been induced by production over many years um, so everything that we do in the subsurface is really uh, uh, yeah, compared to uh, how safe can we do this without uh, creating unwanted uh, si induced seismicity effects. Now fortunately uh, in sandstones, and we are talking mainly about uh, developing from sandstones here in the Netherlands, uh, no 
uh, earthquakes with a magnitude uh, above 2.0 have been recorded at the depths uh, of geothermal development that we are uh, talking about. Um, in addition, the Dutch government uh, has uh, a policy, an extra precaution implemented that it is not allowed to produce or inject into faults. So we're uh, trying to get away from the faults in order not to, uh, to stimulate these. Now, this is the uh, design of the doublet that is used in the Netherlands. It was a copy from a French design uh, in the, from the basin of Paris, uh, introduced here in 2007, and it has basically not changed much in uh, the years since then. Uh, as with all these uh, systems, there is an injector and a producer. In the Dutch case, the typical uh, width between these two at reservoir level is about 1500 meters. Um, the drainage area is, is quite large, uh, it's 10 to 25 square kilometers, and that means that we can't have many of these in uh, a closed area. It really, uh, yeah, we need to set them far apart in order that they are not influencing each other. Uh, it's a pretty expensive uh, system, 20 to 35 uh, million euros, and the investment risk is as big as the capital capital expenditure, because only after you have uh, drilled both wells and you uh, you start producing and injecting, you will know whether it works or not. So that is a, a major drawback of this uh, system. It delivers quite a high output, 10 to 15 megawatts uh, of energy, and that is uh, enough for heating 5,000 to 7,500 ho houses. Um, they operate with uh, high flow rates, 200 to 300 uh, cube per hour, and uh, that is uh, also a major drawback because it means that we need to have ideal geologic circumstances, and I'll come back to that later. Now let's look at the energy market in the Netherlands. Um, in total, we have an energy demand of uh, around uh, 3,000 uh, petasjoules per year, and 87% of this energy comes from fossil fuels. Fuels. 44% from gas, 37% from oil, 6% from coal, 10% from renewables, only 1% from nuclear, and 2% from other sources. From the gas, 33%, so one third, or 414 petasjoules, is spent on heating, and that with a price uh, of 47.38 per gigajoule, which is the current uh, price, which is set as the boundary by the government uh, above which they will uh, uh, they will give some uh, some subsidy to uh, to the users at the moment. Um, that means the gas market at that price uh, is a market of 19.6 billion euros. So it's an extensive uh, and uh, substantial market. And that is why, because we want to get rid of the gas in the Netherlands uh, as, as part of our uh, energy transition, uh, the government is betting high on geothermal as a substitute for this uh, heating of gas. This table uh, comes from a, a report from 2021, and uh, if we look at back in 2018, we had only 17 doublets in the Netherlands. And they produced uh, three petasjoules, and the ambitions are to increase that to 50 petasjoules or 175 doublets in 2013, and 200 petasjoules or 700 doublets in 2050. That is 25 doublets per year increase. Now let's uh, look at the uh, the current situation, the status. And you can see that we are by no uh, means getting this exponential uh, increase, especially not in the number of producing installations. It's actually decreasing rather than increasing over the last couple of years. 
So we do have a problem. And let's have a look uh, on where this is actually going wrong. And I think uh, one of the key elements is the conventional doublet <coughs> that has uh, some severe limitations and that is preventing this from being used everywhere in the Netherlands and also preventing geothermal to be picked up much faster than it is. One of the uh, shortcomings uh, I already hinted on that is uh, to make this economic you have to have flow rates of 200 to 300 uh, cubes per hour and that requires an ideal geological situation. You need to find a porous permeable reservoir at the right depth, at the right temperature to actually produce these numbers. And if you look at the map on the right you see that only these green patches in uh, the western part of the Netherlands and in the north uh, west are actually suitable for this type of geothermal uh, development. So that, that is one big uh, limitation. And the second uh, limitation is uh, may, maybe even uh, worse for rolling it out faster, and that is that you need to have an, a, a very large consumer to consume this heat. 10 to 15 megawatt is, is really uh, pretty large. Uh, 5,000 to 7,500 uh, houses. Greenhouses have already picked up, but uh, we don't have uh, greenhouses everywhere in the Netherlands. So if you want to use this system, you'll have to start thinking about uh, building large uh, heat networks for uh, the urban environment. And that is extremely difficult in the Netherlands. It is... Uh, yeah, so difficult that we only have one or two systems at the moment running to actually uh, deliver this. And still, this this is what uh, the government is betting on, that this is where the acceleration will come from. Another uh, problem with the conventional systems is that they don't have a very good uh, track record. There is a tendency by the owners of these systems to maximize uh, their profits by pumping as hard as they can, and by pumping uh, harder they increase the pressure and also increase the fluid uh, velocity, and that uh, creates all kinds of problems with the installations, leakage, corrosion, erosion, induced seismicity. So it's uh, the maximization of profits which is not really uh, a wanted effect. So let's uh, see how it can be done differently. And this is where the low unit cost uh, system comes in. It's a design developed by Geothermie Group Nederland, uh, André Mol, who is also a panelist uh, today. And basically what you're doing is you're doing everything much smaller and at higher quality. You're trying to, uh, to maximize uh, the heat that you can harvest from the reservoir and not uh, maximize the profit from an individual installation. And how do you do that? You do that first of all by drilling an exploration well. That exploration well is then locked and tested and the test decides how you are going to design your producer and injector well. And <coughs> as I said it's much smaller so the tested uh, drainage area is also much smaller but as soon as you have passed this exploration phase, you know that you can produce um, at low pressure the heat that you need at the surface. And the main design parameters are the length of the horizontal uh, legs and also the width apart, uh, the distance between injector and producer for these horizontal tracks. Costs are also much lower. Uh, three and a half to six and a half uh, million euros. All the costs that I will be mentioning are from 2020 when we uh, did these calculations and also we published these uh, these numbers. Um, investment risk is much lower than uh, what we have seen before because the only risk is the exploration well. After we have drilled the exploration wells and we've done our tests, we know that we can produce what we need at low cost. Smaller drainage areas, so we can put many of these uh, systems next to each other and thereby increase the heat harvest that has uh, that we can actually get from a particular reservoir. 
Flow rates are also much uh, smaller, but the probability of success is larger. So what is the, uh, the concept? Uh, to summarize it, uh, we aim to optimize the potential of the reservoir and not to maximize profit of individual installations. We do this by first drilling an exploration well, logging it and running static and dynamic production tests. These tests determine how, under low pressure, the required required volumes can be delivered. We use premium materials to ensure maximum safety, maximum, maximize the longevity and minimize the maintenance costs. The <coughs> environmental uh, footprint is much smaller than with the larger systems because we need less material, less, le less cuttings, less waste, waste streams. Uh, the drilling locations itself are much smaller so that it can be integrated into an urban environment and there's also much less noise. So the dynamic uh, design opens the way to develop lesser quality reservoirs. So we're not dependent as we are in the uh, conventional systems on these uh, high quality reservoirs. We also can develop lower quality reservoirs. We just simply drill longer into the reservoir to get the uh, rates that we need. The solution is scalable. We can have many of these LUCs uh, together to, get it, to create the volumes that we need the, uh, and deliver the energy that we want. And a network of LUCs is also inherently uh, as an inbuilt redundancy. If one of the LUCs needs to have a maintenance job done, then the others can take over. So it increases the security of heat supply in a network. Let's look at uh, two examples that we have uh, done interpretation for uh, on and that we have also published. Data in the Netherlands, so we are very fortunate uh, because all seismic and well data is uh, free, open source after a couple of years. So there's a huge database and log where you can retrieve the data. And in this particular study, we uh, retrieved and looked at wells from uh, 80 different uh, wells in NLOG, we downloaded it and in uploaded it into our software. Hundreds of 2D seismic lines and uh, five 3D seismic uh, data sets that we have merged into OpenDetect into a large volume and we have interpreted different parts of this uh, system. And I'll be talking about Enschede, which is the hometown where we have DGB's uh, main office, and Erika, a bit north of it, just north of the uh, Schoningen oil field. Let's start with uh, Enschede. So Enschede is in the eastern part of the Netherlands and if we look at a profile through the subsurface in the Netherlands from going west then The Hague to Enschede um, then we see that we have a completely different uh, geology here. We're looking at uh, a window between 1500 and 2500 meters for the uh, LUC development. Um, and in the west, the Hague, uh, south of the Hague, we have all these greenhouses. We have many uh, uh, conventional systems, and they are producing from Cretaceous and Jurassic uh, reservoirs. So that's the green and the blue stuff. We don't have that in the, in the, in the eastern part. We have to look at the Carboniferous uh, formations. And in the Carboniferous, the upper Carboniferous, we actually do have sands uh, that are uh, that have good potential for LUC development, and these sands have been ignored and are not possible actually to use these and uh, develop these with the conventional system. But with LUCs, they can be developed. What we're looking at uh, here is a seismic line through two wells. We're looking from the south uh, to the north, and. The interval of interest is, the, uh, is marked here in yellow. That is the Tubergen formation and on top of that in the northern part we also have the Lut. Both formations are consisting of sands and shales and the sands in these uh, formations are our targets. It's very difficult to, uh, to map the base of it but the top of it can be uh, mapped uh, relatively uh, easy. <coughs> and um, that is the, uh, the base at Sechstein and that I will be showing here. 
So Enschede is the town in the south of this uh, map. And this is the 3D seismic interpretation that we have done with the faults and the Enschede location, uh, LUC candidate location is what we will be looking at next. So this is a line running <coughs> through this uh, location. And again, we're looking at sands and shales between the uh, base sextine in purple and the yellow line, which is the interpreted uh, base of the Tuberga formation. Now, it's impossible within this seismic to uh, map individual sands, but we do know that there is a package of sands and shales of different quality, different thickness, different um, uh, porosities. And somewhere in that formation we will find uh, the sand that we would like to develop. And if it is not one big uh, sand layer that can be developed, we will just uh, not follow horizontally this, uh, this ideal sand layer. We will just do uh, a mingled, uh, a co-mingled uh, development of very various uh, smaller layers. So we either uh, drill uh, horizontally if there is a thick layer, or we ho drill uh, uh, under a under an angle to develop more than one uh, sand layer. We do know that the sand layers are there between 1755 meters and 2165 meters. In our calculations, and these calculations uh, we published, we are going for an installation that can feed uh, heat to 600 uh, homes. And we uh, set the uh, upper temperature to 63 uh, degrees. And after cooling down, it would go back to 33 degrees flow rate, 100 uh, cube per meter. And the cost of such an installation would be 6.5 million euros. Again, this is based on 2020 uh, figures, so before inflation and before all kind of changes uh, in our, uh, uh, in our uh, gas uh, and energy uh, costs. Uh, but still, it gives you an impression of what, uh, what we're looking at. Um, and this system, as we calculated it in 2020, would have a net present value of 12.7 million internal rate of return of 14% and a total return over 20 years of 249%. And you would break even after six years. Now, the second example is the low cost unit, unit cost uh, development in Erika. Also, this one is in the planning uh, phase. And we have published this uh, as well. Here the, uh, <coughs> the delivery will be to uh, greenhouses and the target is the Bentheim sandstone. And the Bentheim sandstone is also a layer which has not been considered before uh, because it could not be developed with uh, conventional doublets, but uh, with an LUC implementation it, uh, it can be perfectly well done. A line, uh, seismic line running from north, uh, south to north, going through the Schonebeek field, the oil field uh, on the left, and we see the base of the sexta, uh, the base of the Bentheim sandstone in green. That is a very well uh, mappable marker, and the upper, uh, the top of the Bentheim sandstone is very difficult uh, to to map. Uh, but we do know that it exists because of the wells in Schonebeek and other wells that have been drilled in the area. But it also peters out and it is only preserved in these uh, basins, these sub-basins along this line. Here is a map of the, uh, the Erika well near the town of Erika and the uh, calculations that we have done for this particular base. Uh, LUC locations are like this. Um, it's much cheaper than in Twente to, dr to drill it because we don't have to drill through salt. Uh, 3.6 million euros. Um, net present value out of 30 years, 6 million internal rate of return, 14% profitability of 166%. And after seven and a half years, you would be out 
uh, uh, and making uh, making money, you would have gotten your money back. Um, some simulations we did uh, with and without a subsidy, um, based on on hundreds of thousands of uh, different scenarios. Um, we can see that the probability uh, to to break even uh, with subs subsidy is seven and a half years, and without subsidy is twelve and a half, twelve point four years, and based on six hundred. 50,000 uh, scenarios modeling, we see that the P50 for the price of the heat is uh, 3 euros per gigajoule as compared to 48 uh, at the moment for gas. Now, a comparison between low unit cost installations, the two uh, uh, candidate locations I've just uh, shown you, and two conventional doublets which we uh, have selected out of this pool of uh, 26 which we think are representative uh, for what is happening in uh, in the rest of the Netherlands with the conventional systems so we have the uh, the little geest conventional system and the uh, the one in the Hague called Hull uh, comparing that to Enschede and Erika, and we have uh, all kinds of technical parameters and economic parameters listed here. Uh, a few I will just highlight. We see that uh, capital expenditure is, is much, much higher for the uh, conventional systems, 25 and 22 million, and uh, compared to 6.5 and 3.6 for the LUC cases. Um, investment risk is also a nice one to compare. The investment risk for the conventional system equals the capital expenditure, so 25 and 22. And in the LUC case, that is only the drilling costs for the exploration well, which is roughly between half, yeah, here it's uh, half a million euros. Um, an important uh, parameter also is the coefficient of power, that is how much energy do I have to put in for... Uh, electricity for the pump, for instance, and how much energy do I get out in terms of uh, heat. And that is uh, very high for the LUCs, it's 20 to 25, and uh, much lower for the uh, conventional systems, 10 to 15. Um, if you look at the economic uh, parameters, then also we see that the uh, internal rate of return, the earning power is much higher for the LUCs, the net present value is, is much higher, the profitability is much higher, and the economic success rate is much higher. So on all fronts, the LUCs outscore the conventional systems. So let me uh, wrap up. Geothermal energy is a renewable source that is economically viable in the Netherlands to replace heating by gas, especially with the current gas prices, it's uh, very economic. However, the ambition, ambitions of the Dutch government for geothermal energy will not be met if the focus stays on development of large conventional systems and high temperature networks for district heating. And the reason is that the uh, consumers will not benefit from this, they will not benefit from the lower prices, but they will <coughs> have the burden of the construction work and this will mean that there is no support base for this solution. Therefore, I, in my opinion, the focus should shift to LUC development because it's safer, it's environmentally friendlier, it has a lower financial risk profile and it has better economics in general. It is a local solution, it can be integrated in the urban environment so you can reduce the uh, the networks that you need to uh, develop. It's applicable almost everywhere in the Netherlands. It delivers mid-temperature energy, 70 degrees, and that is sufficient for heating. And it is ideally suited for cooperative development. If the owners are also the consumers, they benefit from the energy costs, which will be lower than the cost for gas heating. Here are some uh, further geothermal publications that we have uh, written in the past few years. And I thank you very much for your attention. And I'm now opening the floor for questions. Thank you very much.